I'm going left to my favourite coffee shop, which does the best coffee on the street. And then I come straight back out and I'll call into the paper shop because my friend Casey runs it and we always have a joke. And then I come out of there, go left, curve down here, big new build place here. I'm intrigued at what it's going to do to the house prices in the area, so I'm always looking to see how that's going on. And then I keep left, cross a bridge, which goes over the canal. And I'm going right along here, passing all the boats, and then I'm going up right here, go left, and there I am. I'm out into Oxford Station, I'm there in 10 minutes, and then I'm on my way. Map making is a basic human instinct. It's one of the ways we make sense of the world around us. I've been studying and writing about maps for most of my working life. I'm fascinated by the way they're like windows onto different times and different cultures. The map that I've produced is absolutely unique to me. It's totally subjective. I'm not interested in what's going on over here. I haven't filled any of this area out. It's dead to me. I've edited out what I don't want. I'm doing what map makers tend to do. They offer a specific perspective from their own subjective experience, and the map reflects that. In this series, I'm going to explore how maps give an insight into the political and cultural forces that drive society. Wow. I'm going to dig beneath the surface of some extraordinary maps to reveal stories of power, plunder, and possession. In this program, I'm going back to where map making began. I'll find out what first drove people to create maps even before they could write, and how they then evolved, not just to depict the world, but also to exert power and authority over it. I'll discover some of the great scientific advances that made this possible. And I'll explore how the style of modern maps, which we take for granted as objective, even natural, is nothing of the sort. Valcamonica in northern Italy.